Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe got something. You might you might have something. Yeah. Okay, I'll just be looking over here. Yeah. What's over there? Nothing really. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, please. Welcome. Welcome. Remain seated. Welcome. 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 Morning. It's a new year. Everything's changed. It's no longer Dirty Shed Creations, it's the Al Watson Show, being filmed by some guy. I've got a quick job to do before we get into the shed. Let's just go and do it. <laughs> All right, yeah, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, coming in. Yeah. Flex. I just want to win. Yeah. LABB, who we running with? Yeah. 2233, I'm on 10 again. Yeah. State your name. Big been dope on flame, I just switched the lanes Damn he did it again, I just flipped the pain Stripping and dipping in bass, slab on everything Swimming you sinking away, cause I got big racks coming I put my low racks on it, I ain't skip past losses I had to get back off it, see the fit lab on it Until they whip my coffin, money clip I tossed it I heard it's big bags on big bags on big bags coming Uh uh, coming in, yeah, flex I just wanna win LABB, who we running with? Yeah, 2233, I'm on 10 again. Pump up the action. Bitch, I'm active. If he never heard of Ben Dope, he just napping. Jackson's off the rapping. Keep it on my body, bitch, I'm broke if you ask it. Don't gotta sell him, most of y'all is flawless. Broken whips as long as it is foreign. Heard you wanna, cause the yam's enormous. What's an ass? Since she isn't gorgeous. Live my life, last name of Morgan Freeman. Trying to touch a forest, do not know when knocking on the door is. Came in, I came in, I came in, did it like the Porsche's coming in. Yeah, flex. I just wanna win. Yeah, LA BB, who we running with? Yeah, 2233, I'm on 10 again. Okay, alright. Coming in, yeah, flex, I just wanna win, yeah, LA BB, who we running with, yeah, 2233, I'm on 10, 10, 10, yeah. Come on then, Chief, what right, is happening? Right, so we're happening? back off slow-mo, nice little intro there, worked on that for a long time, that took hours and hours of scripting. Um, got a little hammer review for you, um, which we'll go into in a little bit, in a moment or two. Um, but we also wanted to just catch you up with where we are and what we've been doing. You saw our film that went out for the Patreon, super Patreon thing. We didn't get that. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but we didn't get that. I'd have better clothes on now. Al is a colossal buffoon. So what's happened? Well, you're going to see later on today that we're actually in the process of building a proper dirty shed. Um, what would you call it? A new workshop. A new workshop, yeah. We're being very careful with the term workshop though, and we're calling it a garage. All technicalities aside, we're gonna catch you up on where we are with that. Um, the dirty shed, yeah, you probably just witnessed us bailing out, which is something obviously we're in the middle of winter at the moment. Um, it's not that cold, but it is wet. The, the dirty shed, the problem with it is, any money I spend on repairing the dirty shed, isn't being spent on the new development that we're doing so hence why at the moment we're just running the shed down is what i'd kind of say show us some of its features the dirty shed's well, disgusting features i mean i don't know but here there's mold well no there's better mold growing out of the ceiling just over here well first off this is my sandpaper collection and you can see the the kind of mildewy mold that's growing on there that's probably not great to breathe but you know needs must when the devil rides as I've always said just over here for example we have some sort of mold wetness there's wetness coming in a lot it's not the greatest it's kind of rotting everything that's in it is rotting like this is just you know cardboard with stuff in it and it's rotting oh look there's we should have bailed that out there for example but we didn't let's just get rid of that all the water that comes in here is this disgusting brown color there's my ferric oxide such a shame, such a shame. I'm not enjoying being in here. I really want all of this to migrate to the new venue. We are gonna go and have a look at the new workshop after we're gonna have we've a look. done the review today. We're gonna to do a little hammer review, yeah. Um, maybe the thing to do for you guys is, I'm sure you're sick of just kind of this chit chat. Should we just get into the making with the hammer, start talking about the hammer and then everything else can just come in from there? First things first, into the trunk of destiny. Um, okay. So what are we looking at here, Al? Well, um, 
my uh, fiance now, um, Jen, she asked me what I wanted for Christmas and basically I've been eyeing and coveting uh, Daniel Moss's rounding hammers for quite some time. I think what we're just going to do is just make something that I know I can make um, and we'll go from there. So I think what we'll do is we're not going to make a trace hook as such, we're going to make a variation of a trace hook or actually a wall hook. Uh, 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 I got oh. a present for you. What? I um. close my eyes. It's not like a dog shit wrapped in... What is this? No, it's not a dog shit. It's very dusty. Yeah. What is it? What is it now? Oh, oh. What is it? I don't know, mate. It's, um, well, I presume it's some sort of... Where did you get that? Did you get that off uh, Andy's development? I did. Ah. So, um, there you go. Should we just bang it in the forge, get it to red hot, and then we'll dip it and uh, it should shock all the rust off it. Yeah. And then we'll see what we've got. Thanks, Mark. That's amazing. It's a piece of old crud. <laughs> yeah, most people wouldn't think of it as a gift. Most people aren't the Dirty Shed Creations crew. So there's another reason, isn't there, why we haven't been making content recently? There is. So essentially, you're going to see the you're going to see the um, the new workshop later on today. I was slate in the roof, and it's not really something I've done it in the past. I've I've done little bits of roof work here and there. I'm no roofer, um, but you know, money's tight, so I'm on the roof doing the slates, and you know, what's the inevitability? I slip and fall off, and break my shoulder. So essentially I fractured this shoulder um, 16th of November I fell off on a Saturday morning. Uh, it's coming along but it's still quite painful, can't do stuff with it and it just goes to show you've got to be bloody careful. You fell off the roof. You fell off the roof like he's a idiot. clumsy oaf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Show him. Show, show him the bruising. Ah, two Ooh. two fractures of the tibia, uh, of the humerus here, right on the joint. Yeah, he sent me a text saying he'd broken his humerus and I thought he was being funny. <laughs> yeah, it was. So I just mocked him for being a little bit... <laughs> Fat and, and rolling stupid. off the roof. Yeah. But he'd actually broken his arm. I know. He, Whoops. He humour shamed me. <laughs> Which is a real thing. Uh, I've had a, a fra a multiple fractures of the greater tuberosity. So essentially it's the part of the shoulder. There's a little bump on the shoulder where the bicep attaches. And when I fell over I kind of landed like this and pushed all this up. And my bicep I think has like come round and it's torn it's torn a flake of bone away where the bicep holds on to the, the bone. So the greater tuberosity is the, the fracture that I've had. Yeah, it's one of those things you've just got to take care. And then what happened last week when we were supposed to be filming? Well, so last week we were going to try and bring you guys a pure maker film. We'd had it all set up. Um, and, um, okay, maybe I'd had a couple of bevies. But uh, I was coming down the stairs at home um, in my socks, basically slipped off one of the stairs. Of course, I can't reach out for the banister with this arm because basically I'll probably end up fracturing it again. So what do I do? I end up driving this elbow into the stairs and then just bumping down the stairs on this elbow. So uh, yeah, I'll probably show you the bruises later on. Since doing that, I have had this aversion to even being in the workshop. I mean, I was on, you know, the painkillers for kind of, what would it be about, all over Christmas. And I wonder whether that's just kind of like, you know, do you know what I mean? Just made me a little bit less inclined to do anything first off, but certainly the thought of coming into this dirty shit hole. <laughs> you miserable sod. Tell us about this hammer then. What is the deal? <laughs> <laughs> with this hammer, what's it used for? So it's a, a blacksmithing hammer. I mean, it's it's really, it should be moving metal quicker than any of the hammers I've been using because we've been making do. I do have a blacksmith's hammer. Dives over here to grab it. And unfortunately, the um, the handle's broken on it and I haven't got round to repairing it at this point. So why is it better and different? And what's the... uh, well, one side here is kind of fairly flat and nice, nice, lovely polished faces so they won't leave marks in anything that we're working fingers crossed. Um, and the other ha other side, as you can see here, is, is rounded over. So it's kind of, this, this portion's like a rounding hammer, um, and that portion, I don't know what you'd call it. Smashy, smashy hammer? Smashy, smashy hammer. Yeah. Uh, maybe for set downs and things like that. 
if I'm using the correct terminology. Maybe Dan will pop into the comments and kind of correct us on all that. But um, this design of hammer and that rounded kind of end to it should mean that we can move metal a little bit quicker than with something like this. Even though this has got rounded contours, it's quite a big face and I always found that it seemed it's a lovely hammer to use. It's a bit heavier than this one, actually. So we'll just see how we get on. Um, I think it's, some, it's almost an element of a coach bolt. Or I'm sure it's for fabricating farm buildings. Maybe someone out there could tell us, but I'd call it a coach bolt of some degree. Oh, I love those polished faces. So how was your first use of the hammer? This really, is a review. It's, it's quite really, really good. Really enjoying it. Nice weight actually, not too heavy. Um, nice handle for holding, Doesn't it's not kind of nipping me anywhere. Yeah, they're good hammers. Yeah, well we've straightened it. We've got a piece of useful, useful something out of there, haven't we? That'd be a good bolt, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's already a bolt. I don't think we will use that. I think I'm going to use a piece of mild steel. <laughs> now, I think that's all we need. That's all we need. Oh, some other piece of crap you found on the floor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just, hey, it's, this is, you know, Greta Thunberg. Ooh, Greta Thunberg, eat your heart out. We're reusing scrappy pieces of metal here, young lady. See at the top there. I don't know if Mark can get in. Okay, where are you pointing? Just there. Can you see that where it's just delaminating? It's nice using this hammer though. Do you give it the Watson two thumbs up? Yeah, Dan was telling me. I told um, I told him after I got it, gave him a phone call actually, and uh, just said, "Oh, thanks very much. Really pleased with it." And when I got it over Christmas, like it just sat in the living room, and you know, there's me kind of running through the motions of kind of like until but we got to a point where Jen turned around to me and said you know what do you have to have that hammer in the house and uh, I kind of explained to Dan you know I was so fond of the hammer that I was pretty much just carrying it around the house and he said oh well it's not the first time I've heard that um, I think a chap in America bought one and uh, the hammer ended up actually in the bedroom until his wife said that he wasn't allowed anymore to <laughs> bring the hammer into the bedroom. I don't know what he was doing with it in there. Something sexy, I hope. <laughs> Something sexy, but inclusive. It's actually improving a bit. It is improving. You yeah, couldn't do so that really, the other day. really pleased. Um, but I did have quite some painkillers last night. That's probably why I'm a little bit slow today. I haven't had any all December. And then... Uh, no one's night. noticed any different. Yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> struggling there. Yeah. <laughs> struggling with clothes. Ah, oh, it still hurts though. It still twinges. But I think I've essentially lost all my deltoids. And uh, <laughs> lost all my deltoid and my bicep. It's amazing, it just went. There was just nothing there. Where's this going? But you can see there's like a... You can see kind of like, it's really weird in my skin. You can see where the bruise was. I do that a lot and I shouldn't I should be doing that so try and correct myself what's that you put your thumb on the handle I put my thumb on the handle and I don't know where I get that from I feel that there's maybe a bit more control but essentially I'm just gonna knack my thumb in time so yeah Dan pointed that out to me so cheers Dan. should we give this away yeah we can give this away yeah yeah what should people do then let's quickly come up with a way to give uh, this away comment like and comment Please, if you would, uh, let's make let's make this the best video we've ever made ever. You know, maybe you could have a go at me for being such a douchebag and destroying myself over the last kind of six to eight weeks. You found the throwing star? Yes, I have. It's there. Look. Where? Ah. There. So we'll do what we did last time. Yeah. Stick them with uh, post-it notes to a board. Throw the star at the board. Whichever one it hits. Hits. Wins. Wins. Yeah. Yeah. Completely random. Yeah. Anywhere in the world. Posted out second class, snail mail, you might get boat. it next year. You'll probably get it, yeah, in six <laughs> months' time. If you're in some of the Polynesian islands. I don't think we're very big in Polynesia, actually. You know. 
No. Just something to think about. It doesn't translate. No. <laughs> Who are these twats? <laughs> That was fairly uh, so it moved quite well. Ferocious. It? Yeah, so essentially we're using the rounding portion of the hammer. And if you imagine hitting a piece of plasticine with a flat hammer, you, you, you're trying to move the entire piece of plasticine. Whether you say take that same piece of plasticine and hit it with a ball, you're hitting a little depression and you're kind of moving the metal faster as I see it. Now there'll be all sorts of special terminology for that, but we'll stick with plasticine and moving metal faster. And then of course what you can do is after that point you can go back to using the flat side of the hammer once you've created all those divots to even it all up. So I think what we'll do is we'll do another round of rounding to really pull it all out and then we'll go back to the other side of the hammer to flatten it to pull it all into a more uniform uh, thickness. Gravy. Cool. And I imagine that might happen Pretty damn quickly. noticing with this is unlike any other any other of the hammers I've got I can get really close to that set down there so I can actually get right into that little there's that thumb again I'm trying Dan I'm really trying <laughs> after seeing this he might be yeah I'm not touching you guys with it <laughs> Um, Your skills are irredeemable. Yeah, you're, you're buggered basically. No, I think with that being such a lovely hammer, I'm kind of like where that metal goes from the round cross section into the flat or the set down that I've just put in, I can work right up into this corner where I couldn't before. So those transitions are a lot cleaner than they have been in previous work. Let's make it sound grand. So, yeah, so I think we'll do the. Uh, do a little bit of planishing along the shaft. We'll planish along the shaft and then we'll uh, we'll colour up. Will that give you the ability to create different textures than you have done thus far? It, I'm really looking forward to making a set of skull coasters with that because I think that rounding element will add a, excuse me, this portion of the hammer will, will leave like an adzed like finish as I would understand it in joinery and maybe people who are familiar with uh, Robert Thompson and the Mouse Man at Kilburn. So that'll be quite intriguing actually. Working right up there, which I haven't been able to do before. Actually, it's nice having your ear marks for the first, first visit back into the workshop. Does it make it less depressing? Kind of, slightly. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've just had a big shock, mate, is what it is actually, you know, with hurting myself. You know, as we've often said, you go through life thinking you're invincible and then you fall eight feet and it, you know, for a long time I didn't think I was, you know, I didn't think this arm would move above there and I'm like, what about grabbing things here and there? You know, grabbing things, well, I couldn't do it. But hopefully now I'm kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and maybe I will be able to grab like I used to, powerfully and thoroughly. Is that the kind of fun thing you want me to be doing? Yeah, powerful okay. grabbing. Powerful grabbing.
probably lost the heat with that one. And bear in mind, Dan, if you get in on the comments, you might win this hook. <laughs> you can tear it to pieces in your own review. Look <laughs> at what this monkey made. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh. Uh, monkey noises, Mark. What? Stop them. We'll just I'm sure this is wrought iron, just the way it the way it's moving. And there we go. Quite a cool little bit of furniture you've got there, isn't it? Well, hopefully uh, one of our one of our fans can benefit from my skills. Uh, it's like look at the handles on the hammers. See how even though all of those are just developing that kind of layer of filth. It's just what are we going to call this film then? The Dirty Shed is Dead. Well, something like that. You know, it'll be one of the last films we're making here, I'm fairly certain. I think there'll be others because I just think there'll be a transition to the new shed, but on the whole, I think it'll be among the last ones. Should we just say it's dying? Well, it is dying, isn't it, really? Give us the review of the hammer then. Final I, review. I'm really enjoying using it. I mean, we're not finished. We're not finished with this little project yet. But I tell you what, that's I really like that. Really do like it, and it is going to come home with me. I'm not going to leave it in here for these for these faces to start rusting. Wow, it does make a difference. Just where you can work with the hammer. It's nice weight. A bit lighter than the one I've been using. Beautiful thing. Um, in a way, it's a piece of sculpture, I think, and you know, some of the stuff that Dan does is pure art, and you know, there's an extension of that. And I think craftsmen, if I dare call myself that, you appreciate tools, and the fact that he's made that, fantastic. I like unusual hammers. Not that I'm saying Dan's hammer is unusual, but what I'm saying is, you know, I buy hammers when I'm at car boot sales, um, just because they're something I haven't seen before, or you know, a style maybe, or a shape, or they've got some texture on them that quite interesting. Almost there. Someone asked where you get your copper rivets. They are a roofing rivet, but this is the thing. They're a conservation piece of kit, and they're very expensive, really expensive. Um, and what they're for is Yorkshire slate roofing. When I say Yorkshire slate roofing, I don't mean slate as in Lakeland slate or Welsh slate. I actually mean Yorkshire slate, which is essentially, some of it can be kind of like this thick, and the slabs can be huge. You know, there might be 12 slabs in a ton to go onto old Yorkshire properties, and how those slabs are held in place is with one of those rivets there's a hole riven through the um, the slate and the rivets go through to hang it onto the rafters and then a lot of these old roofs are then cemented in so yeah they're a they're, they're kind of a conservation product for an old style of roofing I don't know what they're called but yeah there you go roofing rivets, roofing rivets but they're for a very specific type of roofing that not a lot of people kind of do anymore. No, it's almost like we set that up or something. Yeah. So I mean if that if that person who's asked that question, you know, is in need of ten, I'm happy to send some out to him if he gets back in touch and gets an address to us. I mean if he wants a few hundred then obviously it's up to him to go and find him. I haven't got that many to give away, but we could certainly if someone wanted a few, they can have a few. So helpful today. What's wrong with you? I know. I think I'm being a bit thick. <laughs> have I just given something away? It feels like I have. I feel happy. Yeah. The regret will kick in later. Yeah. So there we are, we've just punched that out using traditional punching technology. We're stuck. There we 
we go, pop that in there. Just give that another heat and we'll flatten it out. Give it a wire brush and bang, swinging its way to you, the lucky winner, whoever that is. Too small to stamp up. Is it? Yeah, nowhere for a stamp to go. So is that ours? I mean, they don't have to be perfect. So there we go. A little giveaway hook. It is wrought iron, nice piece of Yorkshire wrought iron there. We can't buy wrought iron anymore. up nicely. Okay, there we go. Little hook, something of nothing. Something out of nothing. Yeah, it's got some character that, hasn't it? Nice little wall hook. Yeah. Maybe for your your workshop, you've got a little hook to hang something hang on. Hang a brush on. Yeah, so there we go. We'll do that as a giveaway. So, um, as well as our skulls, we also have had some of these cut out. You've probably seen us using these. I think we used these backing plates when we made that uh, heraldic coat rack thing. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try um, the rounding portion of Dan's um, rounding hammer and just see what the texture comes out at. So we've got one of these in the forge, it's ready to go. Let's pull it out and let's uh, texture it. So yeah, really enjoying using it. Really enjoying using it. Really nice hammer, well thought out, nice handle. Doesn't nip anywhere. Nice kind of pivot point. I'm using it a little bit maybe here, where maybe I should be using it a little bit further down. Those polished faces are holding up nicely, but there's no divots in there. It's not marked any of the faces. There's always a dropsy. Oh, it's a double dropsy. So, leave that there. Give it a little bit of a dry. We've got a little bit of the mill scale that's kind of been pushed into the surface. So we could have probably been a bit cleaner with that. We could have probably wire brushed it before we textured to prevent that. Um, but either way, it's just an experiment at this point, but quite like that texture. And it's, it's nice, like it, it, it's, those divots are quite polished like they are because, um, because the hammer's polished. So the hammer isn't leaving uh, imprints into the work. We're going to go and have a look at your uh, the new shed now then. I'm huh? going to go and have a look at the new shed. Just get a little bit packed up. I am going to take my new hammer with me because I don't want those faces 
And you've got to go to sleep with it, haven't you? I do, yeah, mm. take it to the bedroom. I was the guy. <laughs> I was that guy. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hey. Who the f are you? <laughs> Uh, well, last time you saw this, I think we were pulling down the old garage, weren't we? Yeah, a lot of people out there are going to instantly go, F how the hell long does it take you to build anything? Well, you know that from our films, it takes us forever. Look at the throne project, it just went on and on and on. The door project, we had to stop that, it got so boring. Um, no, we've been on this, but just the format we've taken is, it's pretty bit much been myself and my brother who've built this. So. Yes, it's taken us a long time to get to this point, but we've been doing it on Saturdays, so it's been one day a week. Um, it started picking up a little bit when we got to the kind of roofing stage, and then of course in November, the 16th of November to 2019, I fell off just down this side actually, and that's where I buggered my shoulder. So let's go in and have a little look. So, uh, is it really dark? Can you yeah, pick any? Right, I can do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, here we are, come on in. Fantastic space, isn't it? We've gone for a trustless design. So essentially, um, the idea is to have like a mezzanine level that way and a mezzanine level that way. Um, and then probably some sort of kind of stairs or ladders up into that. Um, we've got the two Veluxes for ventilation. The designs actually show three of them, but uh, we're just going to stick with the two, I think. So how are you going to lay stuff out then? What are you thinking? Uh, the idea was to probably be this, this portion of the workshop here will be something like a like a little machine shop, if you like. We'll have the little lathe will be set up in here. Um, yeah, we might have this as kind of like a little bit of a cleaner, more precision work will probably go on in here. The idea actually, I mean, what would make perfect sense is probably to have the anvil kind of and bits and pieces set up here so we've got the ventilation straight up there. So there's still a lot to do, there's the floor to cast, um, there's the kind of section to build back that way to the wall for the mezzanine, so for like a kind of storage area above. Same possibly with this part back to the front of the, build, um, to the, front of the building, but again I think that's probably going to wait. But with regards to your idea or your question about lighting, see what we'll probably do is we'll end up with a piece of steel that will come, or a piece of timber that will come from that steel across to here. And then we can hang the lights off that, and vice versa on that side. Um, and then really it'll just be a case of, you know, we'll have the pillar drill, probably the planar thickness, a table saw. That'll kind of be it. I mean, it's an incredible space. It's, it's kind of, you know, 4.2 metres by 10 metres. So there's 42 square metres of floor space in here. And then that's before you add on that little bit of floor space and that floor space, which takes it up to somewhere around 65 metres of floor space. So it's a hell of a garage. Um, garage. Yeah, so that's us. So, you know, here we are. We're getting very close now. Should we go up and have a little look at the uh, roofy, roofy bang bang? Yeah. This is of course the outside of the building, right here. Uh, my favourite part of it actually. Um, yeah, do you want me to take that up? <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, so this is the roof. So yeah, any questions Mark? So where did you fall? Um, just basically just before the Velux down there. So just off the side. When you look where I landed, yeah, right into a dog rose bush and actually missed a bicycle that's grown into the hedge down there that's been there for the last 20 years, like missed that by, I've been really lucky, missed it by millimetres. So I mean, if I'd have fallen on that, it would have been, uh, could have been a different setup. So hip on the back, just to be a bit thoughtful about the neighbours so we don't cast too much of a shadow. That, that is more intrusive, that ridge line, than this one. Just as a point, not a very interesting point granted, but a point nonetheless. You get the scale of it from up here, don't you? Yeah, you do. And I really like these tiles. These are a cement, a faux cement tile, but they're they're meant to look like um, real slate. They they add a character to the garage, which I really like. To be honest, if that was an extension on your house, you'd be well chuffed, wouldn't you? That would be a fifth, that'd be a seventy grand extension. That. It looks much bigger now. The roof's on. I know it's all solid. Yeah, well, it's quite tall. I think it's four and a half meters to the top, or is it four meters? I can't remember now, you know, well, was on painkillers for six weeks, so I can't remember a great deal of anything really, but yeah, 
yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Quite pleased with where we've got, considering it literally has been me and my brother that have done this. Yeah. So um, what do you want to know, Mark? Well, you could just say, well, sign off, maybe? Yeah, OK. Um, <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. We know we're desperate to make you a really, really good quality maker's film. Um, and we know we, you know, we know just of late that we've we've been off the boil a little bit. Hopefully, this film's kind of gone some way to explaining why that's been the case. Thank you very much for everyone who bought the Skull Coasters. Trust us, that money hasn't just been squandered away on this and this. Um, it is going towards kind of creating some hopefully really quite interesting content for you guys. Um, about two years ago, Mark and I kind of went to 50 towns in the UK as part of a project. And we got access to some really cool stuff and some of that is real pertains to exactly the kind of maker stuff you know industrial revolution kind of stuff so you know we're hoping to include something like that and hopefully do this kind of tie-in with Dan uh, Dan Moss so get over and check his channel out he's got some great projects on there it's not all power hammer stuff you know he does the handmade things I want to call him a friend of the channel I think he's a friend of the channel and of course we're a friend of his channel so look forward to that content because that'll be a little bit different. Uh, we've got a couple of ideas, I'm not going to tell you what those are yet, we'll just see how they kind of advance because they might advance fairly quickly from now because I'm starting to feel a little bit better in myself and able to do a little bit more as long as I can stop myself falling down any more bloody steps or staircases. So yeah, so thanks very much. Stick with us, like and subscribe, get your comments in so you stand a chance of winning that trace hook. And all the best for 2020. That was rather coherent. Pretty yeah, good for you, that. I know. Well, I, yeah, good. Thanks, mate. <laughs>Welcome to the Al Watson Show. It's a new year, everything's changed. Got a quick job to do before we get into the shed. Let's just do this. Like that, yeah? Well, that was it. <laughs> oh, no. That's the joy of blacksmithing, that you take something like that, that most people would go stick it in them. Well, it's just garbage, throw it away. And yet we can take it and we can make something out of it. Um, however badly. Is it steel or is it raw iron? I don't know. Let's ask Joey, Joey van der Steeg. YouTube did it to me. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, YouTube. We ain't, uh, yeah. We don't do it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> Those bastards have got it wrapped up tighter than a crab's ass, haven't they? <laughs>